Good morning and welcome to today's Wisdom Wednesdays with your girl, Queen Getter Dunn. I am very, very delighted to share with you uh, something I've learned uh, that has helped me renew and maintain my focus when I have a goal in mind. All right. So, and foremost, my professional apologies for signing on at darn near 10.30 instead of 10 o'clock. Again, I told you before, we've got a lot of stuff going on right now. So I ask for your grace and we're deserving of your grace. Okay. (laughs) But um, yeah, I ask for your grace um, as we... uh, have the uh, holiday fast approaching and with the things that we're working on, just please know that at the end of the day, still yet queen get her done, still yet focus on everything that I have been pitching and sharing with y'all for uh, what, the last three, four months. Anywho, so topic, did you come to play or are you just play play? Okay, so you can figure out commonsensically that which I'm going to speak on if you think of them in the, in the context of are you about your business or are you just playing? So did you come to play? So if you're ever given an opportunity but you don't come to play. And what come to play means, are you, just think of it as an athletic you know, sport, okay? So you want to be a track star. You want to run track, but you don't like to train. You don't like to lift weights. You don't like to exercise. You just like to do the bare minimum. You, Maybe don't like to eat healthy. You don't really like water, so you drink Gatorade because you've been told by some people who have misled you that Gatorade (laughs) is an apt substitute for a water intake. (laughs) All of these things, and I'm laughing because we know these things commonsensically when we hear them to be ridiculous. And we know that we can't become a track star if we're not willing to train, if we're not willing to wear the right shoes that we don't have the right equipment, if we're not willing to exercise, if we're not really willing to build those muscles, which is all part of the training. I'm speaking of training on the track and the training that happens off the track for those who run track. And I would know it because I did. <laughs> um, if you don't have those things in place, you don't like to eat healthy ever. You're just like, I'm just going to have burger. I'm in high school. You're, maybe you're thinking, oh, okay, it's not that big of a deal. I just want to have burgers all the time. I don't want to drink water. I heard through the grapevine that I can have Gatorade intake and that'll do me just fine. I guarantee you, Track Star is not going to be in your near or distant future. Okay? Because you didn't come to play. You just play play. You playing around. You want to have the appearance of a track star. So you wear the uniform. You put on the, you know, you put on your team uniform. You got your jacket on. You even got maybe even your track bag. You got your shoes in the bag. All the equipment that the coach says that you need to have. You got it in your bag. But when it's time to run, when it's time to run the race, you're unprepared. You're completely unprepared. Apply this to another scenario, okay? I'm going to use this as an example. I was uh, browsing the mall with my mom and my son the other day. We are scouting new locations for, like I told you before, we've got some launches going on. Um, And we noticed that there were some... uh, and, and, and I hate to say this, but we all, when I speak on this, you'll know, we all recognize what we consider 
and you all would say it from this vein. I'm going to use these terms. Generally speaking, when we're just talking amongst ourselves, so colloquially, we will say, oh, that's a real business. We walk through the mall. We know that Old Navy in the mall is a real business. We know shoe department in the mall. That's a real business. We know that um, uh, Auntie Annie's, that's a real restaurant, food service place in the mall. We know that Air Apostle, right? That's a real store in the it, real business in the mall. Victoria's Secrets, we know that's real. You get my point. Butte, Bath and uh, Body Works, um, uh, we know that. Macy's, J.C. Penney, Dillers, Godiva, Chocolate, all that. We know that. Okay, we look. We walk past. That's real. We know immediately when we walk past a shop that may be locally owned and operated. Why? Why do you think that is? Few of the local owners and shops now there are some and they are amazing like my great colleague david frankel um and his wonderfully uh creative invention for bow ties and men's attire you got to check him out at south park when you walk past his kiosk you know this you look oh that's a real business you see him in his attire he has not come to play he has on a full three-piece suit. He looks the part every time he's there. Anyone he has there representing him looks the part. You know they came to play. This ain't play play. However, we know that when we walk past some stores in the mall, as much as we want to give our heart to what we call local mom and pop shops, we know the difference between Waffle House and maybe a local diner. There's, there's something different there. What is it? Because the, the makeup is the same, quote unquote, because behind any corporate entity, as I have shared with you over and over again, there are real live individuals. So those same individuals who are human beings are the same individuals who are behind a mom and pop shop, quote unquote, or a local diner, quote unquote. Now, some local diners, they thrive at it. They look real. So, and when we're talking about this real versus, you know, play play, basically we, when we walk past a, an establishment and we see certain merchandise and a certain level of merchandise, it doesn't even have to be expensive. It just shows you that they have put intention behind their displays, behind their marketing, behind their merchandising, merchandising being how they organize and display their merchandise throughout the store. You then know immediately, this is a real business. Let's go in there and shop. Do you want to be considered real or play play? Because oftentimes when we see a play play business in a mall, because it does happen, there are some malls that will open their doors to what they consider small business owners. They want to stimulate the economy, which is beautiful because oftentimes most small business owners cannot afford the overhead costs. And we talked about overhead costs, so that means what? The lease payment, the insurance that is generally required when you assume a commercial lease space, it's normally something that is required. You can't go without the insurance because as soon as you do, you actually have breached the contract. Reason being is because they're protecting their interests. They shouldn't have to pay for your insurance because it's your activity in their property ultimately. So that's why there's a requirement that you have the insurance to protect their property. Okay? And they're really throwing you a bone by telling you, yo, you go get your insurance, okay? Because at the end of the day, you're still responsible to them 1,000%. You, your responsibility and liability doesn't go out of the... It, it's not mitigated in any way, shape, or fashion because you are in the space, Okay? And they can third-party lawsuit you and, and assess liability all day long. But the point I'm making here is that here you are in this space as a small business owner 
and you may be pulling things together to afford it. I've been there in the beginning. I know what it looks like. I know exactly what it looks like. You can't, you can't show me uh, generally anything new under the sun right now. Now, I'm open to seeing, um, I, I know that I have so much more to learn, but what I'm sharing with you is that, of course, we know that at this juncture, I'm an expert in my field. So the point that I'm making is that we, and you are expert consumers. You are experts in your own right. And the point I'm making is that when we walk through that mall, we know in our experiences, because our experiences help us to be expert in our uh, rationalization, expert in our um, in our interactions and how we perceive things, right? So when you walk through the mall, you've been past old. You've been past Old Navy a million times. You've been past Macy's a million times. You've been past J.C. Penney a million times. When you go past these things, you know you're like that's a real business. You don't even question it anymore because you know this is how they do. This is the merchandise and this is the expectation. There you have it. Then you know when you're walking through the mall or walking past any marketplace or whatever, then you, you're like, wait, well, that's new. <laughs> and here's the test. Hmm, that's new. Looks locally owned. Now, that's when someone's being nice. When they say, oh, that looks locally owned. Other people, oh, that look, that's bootleg, which is play play, right? Or that, that ain't no real business. I've heard that a million times over. When you're like out and about and you're hearing how people um, perceive different things. Wow, interesting. I've seen that as well. Oh, okay, so they must, you know, somebody, oh, they, you see the mall, or you've heard this too. The mall must be losing money. They must, you know, it's, it's going down. Going down is a colloquial term for, oh, they must not be doing well. So they are opening their doors to any prospective tenants to keep their doors open, the doors to the mall open, keep the money going. So the point I'm making again is, are you for real? Did you come to play? Are you play play? So if these opportunities are available to you, hey, take them where you can get them, yo. Get it how you live it, right? I Hey, when now that they have these opportunities available to small business owners, they've done it in Four Seasons Town Center, they've done it in Haynes Mall in Winston-Salem and, and many other malls across the country. And it has been a successful uh, business model for tenants who came to play. They then thrive therefrom and then they have other locations and they expand and it works for the mall and for themselves. Now there are others, they stay there for maybe a month or two, don't do very well, they're out of there and in comes the next tenant. And they make it or break it, depending on whether or not they came to play or are they just being play play? Are you going to showcase merchandising? Are you going to make an effort to design your store in a very deliberate manner to bring consumers in? Are you going to set your prices to ensure that your costs of goods sold are in your price instead of trying to pull together your rent, your lease payment each month and pull together your, your uh, labor costs each month? Or it's just you trying to stand in there all day long from 10 a.m., excuse me, to 9 p.m. That stuff gets heavy. And you see it even with celebrities doing it. I mentioned the one that we 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 know most uh, readily, I would think, um, Rashida. Rashida thrives at it. I've been to her store. It's gorgeous in there. Not only is it gorgeous, she came to play. Or do you have an at? Do you have a disposition of entitlement? That's not coming to play. That's being play play. People really, at the end of the day, as much as you are a celebrity or as much as whatever the accolades you have amounted in your life that say, hey, I'm worth it. Even Rashida greets people as they come in. That was something that impressed me beyond measure when I visited her store. She wasn't sitting back in the back like, yo, I'm... I'm me. <laughs> I'm me. I don't need to do nothing. 
That's play, play business. You can always tell who is there to play, who came to play, 